Hello guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to the channel. What an absolutely glorious evening it is this evening. It's been baking hot today, absolutely scorching, about 30 degrees, but temperature's a little cooler now here in the hills, around about 23. But yeah, we've got a couple of hours until sunset tonight. And as you might be able to see, we've got a blue sky evening, and that's been pretty much the case for the last couple of weeks which is why I haven't been out that much with the camera. But I've been enjoying the weather nonetheless. It's been fantastic weather for swimming and kayaking, which I've been doing quite a bit of. So that has been a big plus point. But today we're heading up to Fall Dry Garn. It was an Iron Age hill fort. There's lots and lots of different features within this landscape, actually. Tons of standing stones, cairns. On this particular hill fort there's a lot of circular hut foundations along with the old remains of the fort walls which is interesting in itself so we'll be exploring those and hopefully we can maybe find a composition that we can incorporate some of the history into this place as well because this area here in the Priscilla Hills is full of history, myth and legend. Heaps to talk about and explore in this area which we'll be doing a lot of during the next year or so. Today I'm here for two reasons really. One is the heather is starting to bloom. You might just be able to see it here behind me. And also, just listen to that. Absolute silence. <laughs> and that is uh, music to my ears because this time of year in Pembrokeshire, it's quite busy with tourist season in full swing. So come to the hills for some peace and tranquility today. And Hopefully we'll get an image. I've also got a new camera bag, which I'm going to be talking a little bit later about in the video. So yeah, we'll crack on and get into this hike and see what this evening brings. Hopefully we can make an image. So I did get the camera out of the bag briefly to uh, take a test shot and look at a composition. I think the composition worked quite well, but the light wasn't great. Foreground was in deep dark shadow. My background was being lit by the sun. So the contrast was quite high and it didn't really work, especially with the blue sky. But maybe it might work quite well for a sunrise shot because the sun will be rising in that direction, which might work quite well lighting up my foreground as well. So that might be something I can come back to on another occasion. And what I have noticed as well, this heather in this area is a lovely violet color actually. It's absolutely beautiful. What I'm used to in the Peak District is more of a purple reddish hue. And this is a very light bluey violet color, which is absolutely beautiful. I don't know whether that's because we're quite near to the sea, I don't know. But yeah, absolutely stunning. So peaceful up here, guys. Absolutely peaceful, beautiful. Right, another 100 yards, and we're at the top. So, this circular area here that you can see would have been the remains of one of the, or the foundations of one of the round huts that used to be in this area. I believe there was around about 250 of them on top of this old fort. It's quite a remarkable location really, especially with those amazing cairns at the top. And I do believe that Fold Drygarn translates into three cairns on the hill or the hill with three cairns, something along those lines anyway, which is pretty interesting in itself. And they are actual uh, burial chambers as opposed to just cairns that people have built. So yeah, quite a lot of history up here. It is an amazing landscape. We just need to find an image, guys, don't we? <laughs> we just need to find a photo. I did manage to find a composition. Finally, after a bit of scouting around, and I've 
I'm actually on the shadow side of this outcrop we've got here. I was up here a couple of weeks ago actually doing the Photographer's Clubhouse monthly challenge which was hills and mountains and I took a shot looking back down the valley from the top that we can see here which I'm photographing now. So there's some fantastic entries. It was a really, really strong competition uh, last month. Absolutely brilliant. So this composition I think is a lot different to the one that I took when I was up here last time. I'm actually on the shaded side of the hill and that's given us a lot of contrast, a lot of texture and detail in the foreground here with these long grasses and the heather, which is in bloom, which is beautiful. And we've got this lovely hazy valley stretching off into the distance, which looks lovely too. I'm gonna to take this one. The ground here is particularly spongy, so I've got the 10 second timer on. I've got my 33 millimeter prime lens on for as much sharpness as I can possibly get out of this camera and uh, not focus too much on the sky and just let the glow of the light wrap around this landscape and kiss the surface of this wonderful heather and hopefully we can get a nice shot. So I'm going to grab this one now as the light changes and I'm getting eaten by flying ants tonight as well which is uh, not what you want is it but yeah absolutely beautiful. Did see a couple of people about 10 minutes ago but yeah, that's all. <laughs> Yes, I am bracketing, just in case you wondered. I don't know if I'll need to, I'm hoping I won't, but it's nice to have the option when we get back to post-production. So that was F11, 80th for second ISO, 160. So, we'll have a little wander a bit further around and we'll talk a bit about the bag and uh, yeah, see if we can find the final shot of the evening, see if we can come up with something a little bit different than when I was here last time. So the light is just dipping down past the horizon now. Beautiful light hitting the side of this uh, wonderful hillside here. Got this amazing little rock formation here in front of us. It looks absolutely fantastic to be honest. I just don't know whether it's a little bit strong in terms of the composition. I don't know if there's enough going on in the background to balance things out. I think if we had some details, some cloud coverage, some beautiful golden light hitting the clouds, I think maybe that could balance the image a little bit more as it is it looks a little bit too foreground heavy but i'm working on uh, what we've got really light's absolutely sublime beautiful golden light hitting these rocks and that's what drew me into this image some splashes of heather and some other rockery type plants a few sheep dotted around in the background and then the heather on the hills there in the background yeah looks stunning just uh, don't know whether the arrangement works with the blue sky but like you know i knew this as we were coming out this afternoon um, you're working with what you've got haven't you in the summer but absolutely beautiful so yes i'm going to grab this image while we are uh, all set up here eighth of a second f11 iso 160 around about probably 16 mil my 10 to 24 lens uh yeah absolutely absolutely lovely let's just grab this one we've got the 10 second time run because the ground's really spongy don't have my spikes on my tripod today um, and now uh, I'll explain a little bit why that is the case in a second. Just uh, let this one take its final shot. Yeah, I think that's probably the best of the light now. It's just dipping down. So let's take a look at this bag and I'll show you the uh, final image at the end and also the 10 clubhouse winners from the Hill and Mountains Challenge. Right, let's take a look at this bag. This is the Photo Sport Pro from Lowepro and Lowepro very very kindly sent me this bag to help support what I do here on YouTube and my landscape photography work. It's not a cheap bag, it really isn't, but quality wise absolutely brilliant and it's one of the most comfortable bags I've ever used I think for hiking. Um, these come in 
a variety of different sizes actually. This is a 55 litre one and that's why I was really interested because my old bag was only 45 litres and at times, especially if I was out on a long hike carrying lots of gear, I struggled to get everything in. So this extra 10 litres in here is going to make the world a difference. It's also lighter, so it's 10 litres more in capacity and it's lighter too so it's a win-win really they do make these in different sizes depending on the size of your body so uh, if you're a larger guy or girl then uh, you can uh, pick up the larger variety i went for the medium small version i was kind of right in the middle um, and you can adjust it to suit your torso as well it's got a variety of different pockets on it which is great for the landscape tool. But what i like what they've really done is they've allows you to access the camera cube from the, uh, from the back or the front of the bag. Now, I always prefer to get in from the rear of the pack, the part that sits against your back. And the reason for that is when you put it down in the wet, muddy grass, when you put it back on again, you're not putting all that mud on the back of your top, on your coat or whatever it is that you're wearing. So I always like to access my camera gear through this panel and uh, they've got an integrated camera cube in here as well, which takes all of your camera gear. And actually the camera cube, its footprint is smaller than my old one, but it's deeper. And that means I can get all of my camera gear in vertically. It even takes the 18 to 300 mil Tamron lens I've got here, um, just like that really. So the actual footprint size of it is very, very small. So you can cram loads of gear in there. I can get, uh, I've got two primes in there today, my wide angle lens, my vlogging camera, microphone, filters, and also my X-T3. So yeah, you can get heaps of gear in there and uh, yeah, nice and comfortable. Now, this is not a review video. If you want to learn more about this bag, you know, I'll leave a couple of links in the video description to today's video. Um, one where Lopro themselves go through all of the features in this bag and there are tons of features um, that they go through the whole thing and the fitting guide and everything and there's heaps of information on their website as well so I'll leave a link for that but I'm going to be using this bag going forward for all of my landscape photography adventures it comes with waterproof cover as well and an additional strap so you can take the camera cube out and use it as a separate bag you know so if you're going wild camping for example and this was full of your gear but you just wanted to do a little excursion uh, maybe in the morning you could take camera cube out put the strap on it and just carry that so that's a really great feature um, in terms of the tripod they the tripods sit in these outside pouches here and that's why i mentioned i haven't got my spikes on because i was worried that it might rip through the side of this uh, this panel on the side so where my old uh, way of strapping the tripod and it was all external so maybe i'll get something that can just pop over the feet of my tripod so it doesn't damage the bag so this time of year i'm super busy lots and lots of client work on so i'm not sure when my next video will be but i will be out and again creating more content very very soon so please do consider subscribing and liking if you enjoy this content and want to see more. Hit the notification bell as well because I'm told that really does help out to make sure you get notified. Another thing you could do is check out my newsletter as well because when I put new videos out, I send a newsletter out to everybody to make sure they're receiving a notification because the algorithms sometimes don't always work out and supply content to people that want to see that content. So. Yes, until next time guys, please do enjoy the image that I took here this evening and the 10 Clubhouse Challenge winners from July, which was Hills and Mountains. And if you would like to take part in next month's challenge, please do consider checking out the Photographer's Clubhouse.